can hear me okay, I guess. Um, my name is Mike Clement. I'm the Director of Technical Sales for Acme Packet, uh, based here in North America. A uh, little quick bit about Acme Packet. I don't know if a lot of you have heard of us already, um, but Acme Packet has a glance, the creator of the Session Border Controller category for SBCs. Uh, over 50% of the market share, uh, continuing to grow, with over 420 customers in 81 countries, uh, top tier customers worldwide, a list of premier distribution partners. Um, won't go through the whole list, but they're all very familiar names. Uh, 300 plus employees in 22 countries based in Burlington, Massachusetts, and it's a publicly traded company which went public back in October of last year. So a little background on Acme Packet. Uh, so as you can see, we've been in the SP, uh, SBC Session Border Controller market since 2000, since the inception of the, uh, of the company. Um, building on, on Jim's discussion of the architectures that we see out in the marketplace today, um, <clears throat> what, are the, what are the Session Border Controller functionalities that are required to support these infrastructures and network strategies? So, you can see here there's a bit of an eye chart of interconnects between uh, MSOs, the PSTN, CLEX, ILEX, ASPs, and uh, obviously um, access providers for trunking capabilities. Um, what they all have in common is they all need um, most of this functionality that you see here on the screen. Security, um, at Acme we have a product suite called NetSafe, which provides uh, denial of service protection for the SBC itself, access control, topology hiding, VPN separations, and then denial of service prevention for the service infrastructure. We believe that a session border controller first and foremost must protect itself so it can then protect the rest of the infrastructure behind it in the network. Um, service reach, which is critical, as you want to interconnect with many different partners and provide peering services, you've got to have a multi-protocol capability such as SIP, HTTP, MGCP, and the interworking function between those protocols. Um, and as we know, not every protocol is, even though they're standards, they're not exactly completely 100% the same. So, Normalization and, and fix-ups are very common in, in the industry. We see that a lot. Um, one thing we see a lot of as well and more on the enterprise side is overlapping IP addresses and VPN bridging requirements. Transcoding, as we're seeing more and more networks, um, G711 is really the predominant um, codec for, for voice, voice over IP today. We're seeing 723, 729. We're seeing ILBC and other codecs starting to come into play, more, uh, which are more conducive to IP peering arrangements and broadband network. So transcoding is a big functionality as well. And then address, address translations and response code translations are critical as well. Service level assurance. Without it, you really can't provide quality peering, uh, peering capability. So admission control, session agent constraints, where you can actually limit the number of simultaneous sessions between peering partners, uh, provide policies against those, those uh, session agents or peering agents so you can provide the same level of, or service level agreement policy enforcement. Um, and you can have different la layers of policy enforcement for different session agents or different realms for different interconnect partners. And obviously quality of service metrics marking and quality of service reporting are key. Um, and as Jim mentioned earlier, so revenue and cost optimization, you've got to have accounting capabilities, you've got to have CDRs, you've got to have uh, <clears throat> either radius records or, or customary CDRs, some way to basically provide settlement. Um, session timers is something that's pretty interesting as well, so when you've got uh, long-term calls that are actually fraud, fraudulent on your network, you can actually terminate them after certain periods of time, and then routing and load balancing capabilities so you can pick least cost routes and provide balancing amongst your different products within your, or different peering partners within your network based on network traffic models. So these are what we see are the basic functionalities of a session border controller to support the network architectures we're discussing today. A simpler model here just uh, showing for peering exchange where you've got multiple different rate centers supported by, a, say, a single soft switch in a, in a carrier's uh, operator's network, and then interfacing to what we call our SDs or session directors, or our, our session border controller. You'll see that acronym here on our slides. Um, <clears throat> you have multiple ways to select which interconnect carrier you want to use. There's internal local route tables or internal routing capabilities based on policy and, and different functionalities within the session border controller, as well as the ability to interface to an enum server so you can pick those carrier routes and utilize the best and most cost-optimized routes for your peering connections. Um, this is the eye chart, <laughs> which there'll be a test after the, after the discussion. Uh, <clears throat> we, I think we've all probably heard a lot about IMS at this point. Um, this is the Etsy tie span uh, standard model for IMS. And the goal here is to kind of show you the, the roles that the session border controller can play in an IMS architecture. On the, uh, on the interconnect side, it supports the inner working function, the uh, border controller function, the uh, policy decision functionality, and then the uh, interconnect border gateway functionality. With, um, with Acme Packet, these all can be supported um, as an integrated solution within a single session border controller 
are also in a, in a distributed fashion with multiple session border controllers providing different functionalities. You can see that the inter, inter working protocol supported, so uh, H248 to the border gateway function and diameter between the uh, policy decision function and the border gateway control function, and then SIP to the inner working function. On the access side or core side of the network, you can support the core border gateway function, again with 248 control, and then diameter to the PCSCF from the uh, policy decision function as well. So session border controllers do, do play a large role in the IMS networks that we're seeing put in place today. Um, and we're seeing a lot of activity in the IMS space worldwide with session border controllers. Um, in wireless solutions, we're seeing, we're starting to see a big transition and a lot of activity in session border controller market there as well. Not only from uh, peering and interconnect, we IPX, which Jim just explained the, uh, the IPX interconnect uh, uh, promotion, uh, bilateral peering arrangements, PSTN uh, originating and terminating transit for IP traffic, and you can see here that you've got your IPX operators, which could have session border controllers uh, supporting the peering arrangements. For mobile operators, they're moving towards IP contact centers and uh, IP-based directory services and other applications. And on the access side, you see, uh, see SIP and uh, H323 trunking capabilities to IP PBXs out in the enterprise. Um, we're seeing fixed mobile convergence where you've got voice and uh, messaging services being supported, video streaming, gaming, and then voice and video over IP services. So with all of these IP services being generated and wireless operators moving to a, more of an IP infrastructure, we're seeing session border controllers in a much greater need in these network architectures as well. Uh, just quick about IP interconnect, IPX interconnect. So for the uh, IP peering exchange solution, the Acme packet solution, as we said, placed here with the uh, IPX operators, supporting functions like rate limiting and call gapping, the interworking protocols in IMS solutions, pre-IMS solutions, and then obviously call scalability and performance for carrier grade capabilities um, are all key functions that we're finding in IPX networks that we've been trialing with today. Uh, some of the experience that Acme Packet has with, uh, with interoperability, we have one of the largest IP interconnects in the world between some of our announced customers like Sprint and Time Warner, tremendous amount of IMS-based experience with our session border controllers. And uh, just to, uh, with 420 customers, more than that now, we have um, quite a bit of experience in the, in the peering world. Um, my last slide here would be one of the things that Acme Packet has done uh, for our customers is create what we call our connected universe. Our connected universe is a program that's designed to bring um, carriers and operators together to support IP peering interconnects using Acme Packet products. So the goal of the Connected Universe program is to educate the market and, and generate leads for you to find uh, new peering partners, promote the service provider relationships, and obviously ease the interoperability, um, make things easier. Since the customers in the Connected Universe are Acme Packet customers, they're typically Acme Packet to Acme Packet. So it's, uh, it's very easy to meet, meet new providers, meet new um, operators, and then provide the uh, interconnect services. There's two types of members. There's Constellation members, which are service providers that offer IP interconnect-based services, and then STAR members, who are service providers that look to the Constellation members for bilateral agreements or peering arrangements. Um, on this note, we, um, Lori Coppola, who's our director for, uh, for our partnership program, who created the Connected Universe program, will be here today, is, this morning as well. And at 11.30 for the speed dating section, if anybody wants to talk to us a little bit more, we'd be more than happy to going to more about the Connected Universe program or any of the Acme Packet capabilities. And that was it. Thank you very much.